Hello, this is the Provoke Brawn, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up and wire the NZXT Kraken 240mm RGB all-in-one cooler. I'm going to show you the logic for setting it up in your case, how to connect it to your motherboard and power supply unit, along with the setup logic of everything you need to know, so that by the end of it you'll be fully aware of all the little things, the details and the things to know, things to think about that you might not have thought about as well. I'm using the NZXT H6 Flow RGB, which I've done a separate video on and I'll link to that in the description, and I'm sticking with Intel's LGA 1700 socket on a 14th gen CPU, but this will also work with a variety of other things including 12th and 13th gen Intel setups. Now this is an all-in-one cooler which means the coolant is already inside the radiator. You'll also notice there's pre-applied thermal paste on the pump head as well so you don't need to worry about that and as you may well be aware this cooler comes with a display on it which shows temperatures and other things including GIFs and you can see things like your CPU and GPU temperatures at the same time so that's pretty neat but you will need NZXT's CAM software for that and you will need to make sure the pump is properly connected to the motherboard, so stick with me for that. Now the first thing to do when you get out of the box is to work out the logic of where you're going to place it in your case. For this build I'm top mounting the radiator, and I've done a video separately on where you should place your all-in-one cooler if you're not quite sure for the best thermal performance. But this will make the most sense in this case, and it does in most cases as well to be honest. You either need to work it out so you've got the tubes on the left hand side or on the right hand side depending on your aesthetic. And that can be influenced by things like whether you're going to have a rear fan at the back of the case and also whether you've got RGB RAM, whether you want that covered or not for example. This all-in-one cooler comes with two fans which you need to mount onto the radiator. So working out the logic of which way around the radiator is going to sit is important because you'll also want to face the cables towards the rear of the case so that you can hide them away. So I'm going to put the tubes on the left hand side of the rad in this instance. So I then know that the cables will face towards the bottom which means when I mount it onto the top of the case it will then point towards the back. Now inside the little bag you'll find a load of different screws with the longest screws being the radiator screws so they go through the fans and into the radiator. You'll find there's a number of these in here and you just obviously need to mount the fans like this. Pay attention to the way I've mounted those fans as well. These are set to exhaust fans so essentially they'll pull air from the case through the radiator. You'll note that there's also an RGB controller included in the case. This will give you the RGB lighting for the fans. And it also requires both the USB connection to your motherboard and SATA power from your power supply unit. And I'll show you more on that later on and how you connect those up. But if you want to control the RGB lighting, this is essential and obviously a big part of the system. The setup for it is fairly straightforward though because you'll find there's an RGB connector that comes out of each of the fans as well as a separate power connector for each of them. So you just connect that up to the controller. You don't necessarily need to do it now, I'm just going to show you the steps for wiring this logic up so that you can see how to do it nice and easily before you go about installing the thing into your machine. The next one is the pump head itself. So you'll see that this has a large connector on it and this is an additional cable with lots of different connections on it so it's important to pay attention to this and how it's seated in there because you need to push it in until it clips into place. It's really important that you get this in here and that you connect all the cables up so that not only will the pump work and cool your CPU but also that you'll be able to control the RGB. Now out of this cable comes one cable which is split into three different parts which gives you the fan power that you need. So you have three connectors here and obviously you'll be using two of those from the fan power cables that are coming out of the fans and that's how that would work. Then you have a spare one but don't worry about that. That's simply because the design is the same for this as it would be with a 360mm cooler which includes three fans. So no need to panic that you have a spare connector there. But you will note there's another USB cable that comes out of the pump head. That also needs to be plugged in and I'll show you where in a second. And SATA power which is really important because that goes to the power supply unit and ensures that the pump gets the power it needs. You then have another connector which connects up to your motherboard. And this is the smallest cable coming out of that breakout cable out of the pump head. And that connects to the AIO pump header or alternatively the CPU fan header on the motherboard. If you find that you get an error warning from your system on a CPU fan not being connected, 
that may well be why you can adjust it. I have done a video separately on this that I'll link to in the description. So the USB connections for both the RGB controller and the pump connect to the bottom middle of your motherboard. You should find there's a USB connector down there. Now, usually you have two connections available on the motherboard, and obviously we have two cables to plug in here, which means you then don't have access to be able to plug in anything else. However, NZXT has supplied this Y-splitter cable, so you have a cable here which takes two USB connections and puts them into a single connector that you can then just plug into the motherboard. So you plug the pump head and the RGB controller into this cable, and then the cable plugs into the motherboard. That obviously then leaves another port spare, for other things that you might be putting in your system, whether that's other RGB controllers, fan controllers, or whatever else you're doing in your build. So this is very handy and well worth using and not missing when you go through the build process. Once again, I'm showing you this all now just so it's really clear where things plug in. And obviously some of the preparation is worth doing beforehand, but not necessarily the wiring. One of the things that you do need to do beforehand is prepare the motherboard. So this is a 14th gen Z790 motherboard and LGA socket 1700. So we use this back plate that comes included in the box. Make sure the standoffs are pushed to the far corners and then thread it through the back so that the little standoffs stick through the holes on the motherboard. We then have to find the bag with the Intel 1700 standoffs in it, and that's clearly marked there, and then screw those into those four corners. Now, obviously, this would be slightly different depending on what motherboard you're using and CPU. So obviously, this is for 1700, might be slightly different with others, but there are instructions in the box if you need it. But I'm sticking with Intel here. Now we're mounting it inside the H6 Flow RGB case. So obviously securing the motherboard. Now I will note that you can obviously put that back plate in place after you've done this, if you prefer, if you can access the back of the motherboard. But I find it easier to set it up before putting it in the case because some cases don't have easy access to the back of the motherboard, which means putting things like the back plate and standoff in place can be tricky. So then we go about installing the motherboard, make sure it's secure. And the next stage is obviously to mount the radiator. I've got a lot of cables here from the various fans that I'm threading through to the back to make sure they're nice and neat and then work out where to seat the radiator on the case. As I said, I'm top mounting this, which means that you then have to use the small screws and the washers that were included in that little bag I showed you earlier on to secure it to the top of the case. Now this case will actually take up to a 360 mil radiator, so there's space to choose where you're going to mount it. I could move it over to the left a bit or to the right a bit and vary it up depending on how I wanted it positioned. But as you will see, what essentially what we're doing here is we're pulling air from inside the case through the radiator and exhausting it out the top. It'll be worth checking to see that this is optimal in your system once you finish building it and we're wearing some benchmarks to see what the CPU performance is like. I've done videos separately on this, which I'll link to in the description, but it can make a big difference. The other fans that you've got installed in your case, how many intake fans you've got, where they're positioned and just the overall airflow. So things to bear in mind there. But what I'm doing now is just adjusting it into the right position for me to create a good aesthetic here, bearing in mind that eventually I'm going to mount a rear fan. Now I want to install the pump head over the standoffs and on top of the CPU, which I've already installed. As I said, this has thermal paste pre-applied, so it's fairly straightforward. You'll notice that I've got the tubes at the bottom, and this is probably the most logical way to install this, although you can put them on a side instead if you prefer, so you can actually rotate this and then you can change the display with an NZXT's cam software and adjust it. So you can put them in the different positions to account for your setup. What you need to do now is then use the thumb screws to secure the cooler down over the CPU. Go diagonally from one corner to the other and this will then ensure a good fit over that. You do need to make sure these are nice and tight. Be careful not to over tighten them. I'd recommend using finger and thumb just to tighten them up initially and then use a screwdriver to make sure they're fully tightened at the end. But just be careful not to tighten them up too much. You don't want to damage the motherboard, but you do need to make sure that they are secured nicely so that the cooling works well. If there's not a good fit there, that can cause problems. Then we need to go back and plug the cables in again, as I said, AIO pump header for the tiny little cable that comes out of it and then run the other cables because there are a lot through to the back so they can be hidden away. 
there might be a bit of a fiddle here as you can see there's not much room to negotiate these and i had to move them around to the back but it is important that you do do this and there are a number of cables that need to be plugged in still around there as well so obviously we've still got to plug in the fan power cables the sata connection to your power supply unit and other things so just run those through around the rear there now obviously if they're coming out at a different angle because you've got the tubes on a different position, whether it's on the right or left, you'll need to account for this as well. So it's worth thinking about this before you're seating your pump head down, how much mess you're going to have from all these additional cables that are going to be passing through the system. Something to think about. So once we've got them through to the back, we plug in those two fan power cables to the pump head so that enables the whole system to control the fan speed as well as the pump speed and makes life a little bit easier. Normally on other AIOs, you'd usually connect up the fans to a CPU fan header, for example. So it's ever so slightly different, but this makes life a lot easier. And then the RGB connections connect up to the RGB controller I showed you earlier on. Now, obviously this has two RGB connections on it. You actually have a third one free. So if you are gonna be adding in extra fans to the system, you can connect them up to that controller and that'll allow you to sync the lighting. If you've got an NZXT case with NZXT fans in it, then you can obviously sync them up nicely there. Don't forget the USB connections, very important from both the pump head and the RGB controller to ensure that you can control the RGB lighting and the display as well in NZXT's cam software. So I'll show you that in a second. Now we're done and we have finished up, so we can just power it on and make sure everything's running nicely. You can see the fans are spinning on the radiator and on the case and the pump is working too, and it just displays the liquid temperature as default, so that's just the coolant inside. But you can go into the cam and then adjust accordingly and tweak through a number of different other options in there. You'll notice the way I've got the tubes, they sit off to the side here. They're not in the way of the rear fan, which I will be putting on later on, and they're reasonably well positioned in terms of, yes, they sit on the graphics card a little bit, but only a little tiny bit and it's not going to cause me any problems. And also with them on the left, they're not blocking that Dominator RAM from Corsair, so you do get a really nice view on here. Now, one of the things that I really like about this cooler is the display because you can have it show both CPU and GPU temperatures at the same time, which means at a glance, you can see how your system's doing and whether it's running too hot, which makes life really easy if you're worried about performance or if there looks like there's a problem. So it's great to be able to do that. And I'm going to show you how to do that now in CAM. So when you're in Windows, download and install NZXT's CAM software. If you haven't already, you'll find there are various different settings in here. You can get an overview, for example, of system performance as it sits currently, your specs and other things, as well as the current temperatures. If you want to adjust the lighting for the fans, you can go in and do it here. You'll see that obviously I've got a lot of RGB fans in here, but you can control them. You can either use this one at the top, which gives you basically synced lighting across all of the fans at once in your system or you can go in individually and select from a number of different effects in here that are worth looking at to adjust the display though which is probably the most interesting thing you'll go in here and you can choose from different things so if you want to show both the temperatures together you can do that you can click on here and it'll dual infographic and you'll get gpu and cpu temperatures or you can choose load, so you can see the percentage of how much the GPU and uh, CPU are under. And you can also adjust the colors. So nice one, for example, you might want to have green for Team NVIDIA and blue for Team Intel. So you've got green as your GPU, so you can see at a glance which one's which. And you can adjust other things in there too. You also have the option to just go for single infographic if you prefer. And you can do, again, temperatures, load, speed and other things and adjusting all of this quite simply and then the other ones are probably interesting are the gifs so you can add a gif in now one thing you will notice with the 240 which is worth knowing if you don't know already is that sadly the gifs only display in a square in the middle so they don't fill up the whole display you need the elite version of the kraken coolers for it to fill up the whole circle of your display you sadly only have this limited option here, but you can go over to Giphy, search for a particular thing, download it and apply it, and it will then just sit in the display, but you'll see it's just that little small bit in the middle, which is a shame because it doesn't look great. Um, but not to worry because you do have other options. So there are carousels you can choose from. You can select different things for it will cycle through a variety of things, or you can have just a clock face, 
or you can have web integration with various different things, Google Photos, for example, or just stick with the dual infographic, which frankly is the best. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, consider subscribing and check out the other videos linked in the description. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.